So I'll be talking about uh, some of the techniques um, using open source tools to find out what is the corresponding source code for a few binaries. And so the, the question is why do you want to do that? Very often you get binaries and the context I get them usually is a white box context. So I have the source and binaries. I'm trying to figure out what is the subset of the source code that ends up in the binaries and what part of the binaries is actually not coming from the checkout of the source code but from other origin. Could be binaries that are consumed from open source package repos. It could be binaries provided by a commercial vendor as pre-built and so on. And you would think that when it comes to open source, you, you want to use the source, right? Because a lot of these is uh, code that come uh, from open source. Um, there's also uh, the case where a bad actor may want to squeeze in something binary. So being able to account for all the origins is, is useful. And when you have unknown origins, of course, you have potentially unknown bugs or non-security issues. Um, it's unfortunately common talking about Apache, Log4j, and, and uh, Java to have vendored copies of Log4j, which exist in other published jars, which have been relocated, meaning the bytecode has been rewritten, such that it's at a different pass for non, not nefarious purpose, but you end up having eventually, as that's one of the many examples, uh, code that's squeezing. And um, that's uh, not a good thing because you don't know what you don't know, right? Um, so Java, very quickly. Java, it's simple in a way. You have Java source code or other language which end up being compiled to one or more class files. Um, you have more than one language that can be used, but that's the main thing. Or the class files themselves could be compiled to what's called DEX, which is a format used for Android. And the good thing is that there are strong naming conventions. Usually the name and the path of the Java source file is the same as the path of the class file of files. So its first technique consists in mapping the file names based on the path, so pretty, pretty simple. And then once you have that, you can verify at the symbol level um, that the name of the functions and strings and objects actually match what you can extract from the binary to what you know exists in, in the source code. You can also use decompiler, but the problem with decompiler is that very often the symbols will not name match with what you have in the source. So another technique could be to recompile your source and then decompile them and compare the decompilation of uh, both, both sides. And JavaScript. It may come to you as a surprise, but JavaScript are essentially binaries nowadays. They're being consumed in minified or transpiled um, uh, fashion. Um, and even though this, the output of this compilation or transpilation is essentially JavaScript itself, um, it's JavaScript that is as uh, complex to interpret as a binary elf. And um, you end up having case where you have a large number of third party package, JavaScript package, that end up being bundled in a single blob. Um, quite often there's map files which are used, can help with this. They contain unminified source code and can be used to match. And then you can extract and match the strings, in some cases the binaries, to confirm the origin afterwards. Elf, uh, the primary technique is a combination of dwarf debug symbols, which contains the path to the source code, which you can then use to focus on mapping the symbols or strings that you extract from the binaries very precisely. In the case of C++, we also have uh, the mangled names of functions and objects uh, that can be even more efficient. And last Go, which starts to be a fairly popular language, it's specific in the sense it's uh, statically compiled to a single binary. They can have dwarf like, like elf, but they contain a table of all the lines of code which 
are also present even in non-debug build of Go packages, which you can then use to extract the corresponding set of symbols and lines and match back these two source very efficiently. Excellent. Thank you very much for that.